What is going on everybody? Chris Moses here with Gospel Progressions University. And I'm gonna show you a strategy that really helped me in the early years of playing and learning how to play gospel. What I'm about to show you helped me to make sense of gospel music's chord changes and it seriously leveled up my playing. And it is such a super simple, but really powerful concept. Let's dig in. So before we move on to the good stuff, I want you to know that I have a free guide that's helped tons of people understand how to apply some of the principles of gospel music. It's called, What Do Pro Musicians Know That You Don't? And I'll go ahead and leave the link in the description. All right, now let's jump in with a quick foundation about numbers, because what I'm about to reveal will make zero sense if you don't really know how numbers relate to chords and music. Using numbers in music immediately answers two very important questions about chords. One, which chords do we play? And two, is it a major or minor chord? The chord progressions of most popular music can be grouped into numbers. For example, the song Freedom and Break Every Chain, for example, follow this very popular pattern of numbers. We have one, five, six, and four, or six, four, one, and five. Playing those progressions in the key of C major will give us our one chord, five chord, six chord, and four chord. The six, four, one, five progression will give us a six chord, a four chord, a one chord, and finally a five chord. I use inversions with those chord progressions, but the principle still stays the same. Like I said before, I know exactly which chords to play, because if I know that if the song is in a major key, and I'm given the numbers one, four, and five, I'm always gonna play a major chord. If the numbers given are two, three, or six, I'm always gonna play a minor chord. If I'm given a number seven, I know that it's gonna be a diminished chord. Boom, it's that simple. That's all seven chords in the major, Ionian in the Greek, scale. This system of numbers and chords is what's known as the Nashville number system. So what makes it particularly awesome is the fact that it can be used in any key. Unfortunately, there's one issue a lot of beginners are unaware of. The numbers can represent completely different chords when played diatonically to a scale. What do you mean by diatonic, bro? That's a good question. All right, a diatonic chord is a chord that is built using the notes of a particular key or scale. It consists of three or more notes played together, and the notes are chosen from a set of seven notes within the key, a major key. In simple terms, now imagine if you have a musical scale, like the C major scale we just played. So that consists of C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. A diatonic chord in the key of C will be made up of some combination of those notes. So for example, the diatonic chord in the key of C major are C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, a minor, and finally a B diminished chord. Each of these chords has a unique sound and character, and they're called diatonic because they are formed using the notes within the C major scale without any alterations or outside notes. You know I know what diatonic means, but you can't be out here throwing around musical terms without an explanation. My bad, bro. Nah, you good. What I was starting to say before was that the numbers can represent completely different chords when played diatonically to a scale other than the Ionian or major scale. So this is vital to know and to remember for everything we're gonna talk about going forward. Because although the one chord is always a major chord, a six chord is always a minor chord and a seven is always diminished, things will change when we start using the same number on different scales, like a minor scale, for example. All the chords I've been playing up until now are all diatonic triads. Bro. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, let me explain what that means. Understand that there are two words here, diatonic and triad. You already know what diatonic means as far as playing only notes from the chords given by a scale or a key. However, the triad part means that I'm only playing three notes at any time that are stacked in thirds. So in other words, if the first note of the chord is C or C and E, a major third, and then we keep stacking it like that. C to E is a major third and E 
to G is a minor third away. So this gives us the C major triad. So diatonic triads are simply three note chords that are formed from the scale's notes. But don't sleep on those triads because as we will come to find out, they will play a critical role in what you're about to learn. So the triad is the mind-blowing revelation you're referring to? Nah, hold up, I'm getting there. Now that I've laid out the framework and we built a solid foundation, let's start exploring how all of what we looked at and what we've learned so far will play a vital role in what I'm about to show you. Out of all the gospel progressions we can use in gospel keys, the 2-5-1 chord progression is the most popular progression and it is such a meat and potatoes part of gospel. It's almost cliche, but it's what gives gospel music that oomph and flavor. So how do we get this oomph and flavor? I'm about to tell you. I had to understand this before I could level up anything or get any type of flavor in my playing. So we need to first understand how chords are constructed in gospel. If we extend the triads that we played and stack a fourth note on our chords, and then we position it a third higher than the last note, we get a major seven chord. For example, if I play the first triad, C, E, and G, right? Like I said, these are stacked thirds. E stacked on top of C, and G is stacked on top of E, a third up. If I continue to stack, I stack that B over that G as a fourth note, the first note or the first chord I'm gonna get in the C major scale is gonna be a C major seven. I do the same thing with D, F, and A. Instead of just getting a D minor chord, if I stack an A, a C rather, on top of that A, C is a minor third away from A, I'm gonna get a D minor. The same thing applies to the third chord, E minor. If I stack that D on top of that B, I'm gonna get an E minor seven. F, A, C with a stacked third over the C becomes a F major seven. The fifth chord, regular G chord with a stacked F over the D, a minor third away from D, gives me the G seven or G dominant chord. When I go to A minor, if I stack that G on top of that E, what I'm gonna get is an A minor seven chord. Finally, for the diminished chord, B, D, F, if I stack an A on top of that F, a minor third or a major third away, what I'm gonna get is a B half diminished chord or a B minor seven flat five chord, and we'll get into that. So what we end up with are seven types of seven chords in any major scale, like I said. This works with any scale. I pick up what you're putting down. In gospel music, we're always using some type of seven chord. Exactly, so check this out. In gospel music, the major two, five, one chord progression is only played diatonic to the first chord of the scale, which of course is a major chord. So that's why I say major two, five, one. Generally speaking, if a two, five, one chord progression resolves to a major chord, it's a major chord progression. For example, I'm gonna play a major two, five, one chord progression and the formula or the form for that would be a minor seven or the two chord to a five chord, a dominant chord, back to a major chord or a C major seven. However, here's where I used to get tripped up and I promise you learning this one thing absolutely turned my playing around. I used to hear people say things like play a two, five, one here that's a two, five, one chord progression. None of it added up to me because I had learned that one is always the first chord of the scale and it is a major chord. Uh, one chord in the key of C is gonna be a major or a major seven. And two is always the second chord and it's a minor chord. Three is a minor chord and so on. <laughs> nah, -uh, not with gospel keys. Remember when I told you that the numbers can represent completely different chords when played diatonically to a scale? other than the Ionian or major scale. Every time a two, five, one chord progression is played, the one chord becomes the center of everything that's being played. Another way you could say that would be the most basic major two, five, one chord progression for gospel music would be to play the two chord and the five chord diatonic to the one chord. Right, let me show you an example of that. But we'll try to keep in mind that the one chord is always a target chord in the progression. The one chord could be any major or minor chord in the scale. But for now, let's just stick to the major two, five, one progression. A few minutes ago, I just played the two, five, one chord progression for the, P, the key of C. Two, five, and one. So I said minor seven, dominant seven, and major seven. For example, let's say you wanna to go to F. We wanna make F the target note. So the target note becomes what? Number one in the progression. So we have two, five, and one is gonna be our 
target chord, F major 7. So the way we would do this in gospel, right, we're playing the 2-5-1 diatonic to the key. Really quickly, we know the key of F is F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, and F. In the key of F major, or making F major the one, the tonic, or root, or the target chord, the two chord is going to be a minor chord. A minor seven, that's what we said, right? So we have that as a minor seven chord. And then now we make the five chord. I'm going to play an inversion here. The dominant chord. So the five would be one, two, three, four, five. C, my, uh, C dominant seven. Back to an F major. And we're playing this now in the key of C, mind you. Remember, our target chord for our first chord progression was C major. So we went minor seven, dominant seven, major seven. In that same key, if we're targeting the F chord, it's going to be minor seven, dominant seven, and major seven. The same exact thing. Now I'm going to play that same progression again. The two five one, and I'll target the F chord, but I will make the progression diatonic to the key of C instead of diatonic to the key of F. F is going to be the one chord, but we're going to play it diatonic to the key of C. Two chords are going to be G seven, C major seven, and F major seven. That's a two five one targeting F, but playing it and C diatonically. So don't the chords from the first example sound a lot more compelling when I resolve to the one chord in the two, five, one progression? When I learned this, I was totally blown away and that forever changed the way I approached learning and playing music forever. All right, let's take a look at a real world example of a two, five, one chord progression. Let's go up a half step to the key of D flat major, right? So I'm gonna play a portion of the song, My Life, My Love, my all by Kirk Franklin, but I play it diatonic to the key of the song. Oh man, I love this song. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do. Besides the vocals, the chords and the style didn't have that gospel feel. Not even close. I played the right chords, right? I mean, I was in the key of D flat, but why did it sound so sterile? It's because I didn't approach the song with the correct strategy. Before I could even begin to understand what the one strategy was that I needed, I had yet to appreciate one thing. Intentionality. What was my intention on how I would approach chords? So I'm gonna play that song again, this time with more intentionality by targeting a specific chord. So gospel musicians love to target the four chords. So I'll target the four chord in the progression which is the G flat major because it's in the key of D flat. Let me put my phone on vibrate. Not exactly like how I would play it, but that wasn't half bad. Thank you. That means a lot coming from you. In the key of D flat major, we know that the five chord in this case, A flat, is always a major chord when progressions are played diatonically to the key of D flat. One, two, three, four, five, A flat major. But did you notice what I did to the five and the one chords? Instead of playing it diatonically to D flat, the key of D flat, which would have just given us the vanilla version of A flat major to D flat major to G flat major, what I played the first time, I intentionally targeted the G flat chord and I play it diatonically to the key of G flat major, which is G flat, A flat, B flat, B, D flat, E flat, F, and G flat. So a two, five, one for D flat will give us E flat minor, and then A flat seven, and back to our, we can play a, I'll just play a regular D flat or even play a D flat major seven. Remember, don't think so much of the key that you're in. Key that you're in is important, but where you're targeting and what skill you use is very important as well. It's actually more important. So your two chord would be, you can play it like this, or you can play it just a regular A flat minor seven chord. So the five chord for D flat is changed to a minor chord, which is a two chord for G flat. And the one chord for D flat, which is a just a regular major um, seven chord would be a, call, become a dominant seven chord to a, a four chord is the one chord for G flat major. 
giving us the two five one or a minor five and dominant one and a major four. But that saying it like that is a little clumsy. That's why we stick with two five one. Boy, you so extra. Couldn't you just say that all you did was learn how to change keys in the middle of a song? It's more than just changing keys in the middle of a song. It's more about intentionality and identifying whatever your target chord is and forming your two five one chord progression in the key of the target chord. So doing this will shift the tonal center or change the key in the listener's ear. This creates a more textured and a more colorful chord progression. There you go again using big and scary music nerd terms. I'll explain what that means in simpler terms. You can think of the tonal center as the anchor of a song. It is the note that sounds the most stable and provides a sense of rest or resolution. The other notes and chords in the music relate to this central note, creating a sense of tonal harmony. For example, in the key of C major, the tonal center would be the note C. Most melodies and chords in that key will gravitate towards C and often end on it, creating a feeling of completeness. Well said, sir. Well said indeed. Learning the strategy of playing the chords of a major 2-5-1 chord progression that I taught it to the one chord was a game changer for me. It helped me to be more intentional in my playing and my approach to learning new material. But hold up a second. What about minor chords? They don't get no shine? Hey there. Of course they do. The thing about playing minor 2-5-1 chord progressions is that we use the same principle as targeting a major 2-5-1, but with a single exception. Can you play an example? Yes, sir. I'm going to use a popular gospel song from the 1990s. It's called Gain the World. It's sung by James Hall and Worship and Praise Choir. Oh, that's my jam right there. So we still use the 2-5-1 chord progression, although we were in the key of A flat major. That rule still applies. The two chord is a minor seven, five chord is a dominant seven, and the one chord is a major seven. But then I did something else there with the G and the C and the F. I used the major two, five, one chord progression to target intentionally the fourth chord, which happens to be D flat major using the exact same approach that we discussed before. It's in the key of A flat major, right? And our target chord is D flat, which is the fourth chord. So I took the two chord diatonic to D flat, which would give me E flat minor seven, the five chord diatonic to D flat, it's A flat seven and the one chord, D flat major seven. I mean, here's a secret they never told me as a beginner. The one thing to keep in mind is that both the major and minor two, five, one chord progressions use the same quality five chord, but the qualities of the one and two chord are gonna be slightly different. How do you know if a chord has a good or bad quality? Does it make your playing sound bad? No, nah, it doesn't mean that your chord is good or bad. It basically describes the emotional or tonal qualities of the chord. So you can think of it as a personality or a flavor of a chord. Chord quality depends on specific combination of notes played together. The three most common chord qualities are gonna be major, minor, and diminished. So the target chord was an F minor chord. The F minor is the relative minor to A flat major. So now let's take a look at the F minor scale. Your F minor scale is gonna be F, G, flat, B, C, D, E flat. The scale is just like the A flat major scale, but the focus where we begin, instead of beginning on A flat, we begin on F. When we look at all the chords of the scale, we immediately see that the numbers yield a completely different set of chords than it would for a major scale. So our first chord for F minor would be F minor. The second chord is gonna give us a G diminished, the third chord is gonna give us an A flat major. The fourth chord is gonna give us a B flat minor. The fifth chord is gonna give us a C minor. Sixth chord, a D flat major. And finally, the seventh chord, an A flat major, E flat major. Uh, we have a big problem though. What big problem? Well, didn't you just say that the five chords in both the minor and major two five one chord progressions are the same quality and only the one and two chords have different qualities? You can't get a dominant seven chord from the five chord of F minor if you played it diatonically. All you would get is a C minor seven chord, which is the fifth diatonic chord of the F minor scale. You're absolutely correct. And that's something else that I needed to learn as a beginner as well. You see, the F minor scale that I've always played was exactly like the A flat major scale if we looked at it closely. It's also called the natural minor scale. So what do we do? 
How do we make the five chord that we need for F minor a dominant seven chord instead of a minor seven chord? If we look at it, we know that one, two, three, four, five is a minor chord, and we'll get a minor seven chord, and that's not what we want. So here's another pro secret. When we do a basic minor two, five, one chord progression, we use a minor scale, but it's not the natural minor scale that we're used to. We use a different type of minor scale that gives us the five chord as the dominant seven chord we crave. In gospel, the minor two, five, one is derived from another scale. I bet you I know what the scale is. It's called the harmonic minor scale. Huh, that's exactly what I was gonna say. So whenever we need to form a basic two, five, one chord progression, this is the most basic we can use. Let's take a look at the notes of the scale. So our F harmonic minor would be F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E, and F. We notice that it's a one note difference from the natural minor scale. That one note is what makes the five chord into a dominant seven chord that we can actually use as a five chord to complete the two, five, one progression or the minor two, five, one chord progression. That one note is what makes all the difference in the world for us to take the five chord from a minor seven chord and turn it into a dominant seven chord that we can use as a five chord to complete the minor two, five, one chord progression. But also look at the two chord. It isn't exactly a straight ahead minor chord. The two chord for F minor is G, B flat, and D flat. And if we went up a major third from D flat, we will have F. We actually will have what's called a G, minor chord or G minor seven chord with a change or altered fifth. Some people would say it's a raised fourth or a sharp 11 from C to uh, D flat, or it used to be called a flat five. I like to refer to it just to keep it simple as a G minor seven with a flat five. And that's our two chord. So now we have our five chord. If we look at the rest of the scale, one, two, three, four, five, and we look at the chord that forms from the, the harmonic minor, now we have our dominant chord because now we have the E, which makes the C chord, the five chord, into a major chord with the B flat. We have our dominant seven chord. The minor two, five, one chord progression in any key is typically gonna be, you can play it like here or you can just do the root and the bass in your left hand. It's your two chord. And then we have now some type of five chord. We can play it either here if we wanted to. I might have altered it when I went here because of where I was going, but just to keep it simple, we'll just play a regular seven chord to a minor chord. In summary, numbers can tell us which chords to play and whether or not they're major or minor. Diatonic chords are built using the notes of the scale that you're in. In gospel music, the two, five, one major chord progression is popular and is played diatonically to the first chord of the scale. Gospel music often targets a specific chord. So when we change the tonal center, we create a more textured chord progression. Minor 2-5-1 chord progressions use similar principles as major 2-5-1 chord progressions, but with different qualities for the one chord and the two chord. One chord is gonna be minor, two chord is gonna be a minor seven flat five, or a minor seven with a raised fourth. Chord quality refers to the overall sound or character of a chord and can be considered either major, minor, or diminished. And finally, the minor scale that we used to, we're gonna have to change that into a harmonic minor scale, which will yield a dominant five chord. I hope that has blessed you, hope that has helped you. How would you use this in your music? How do you see this helping you to develop in your gospel music and in your playing? If you wanna take a bit of a deeper dive, I do have my free guide over at gospelprogressionsuniversity.com. Totally free, I'll go ahead, like I said, I'll leave the link in the description. You can go and check that out now. God bless you, and I will see you in the next video.